What is up you guys, my name is Selena and today is going to be a new tutorial showing you guys how to edit like Yun Osun in Premiere Pro. So we're going to be going over things like speed wrapping, smooth zoom transitions, camera whips, and luma kings, and a little bit of coloring. So let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so I have my three clips laid out right here. So in his cinematics, they're usually in slow motion. So, so I'm just going to select all of my clips and press Command R and then change the speed to 50%. So they're all going to be in slow motion and I shot this in 60 frames per second. So it's super smooth slow-mo. Now also a lot of his clips are really stabilized. So what you can do now is right click and then nest the sequence and then just press OK, and then do the same for your other clips that you want to put Warp Stabilizer on. So I'm going to skip the middle clip because it has a whip in it, and then I'm just going to nest the last clip, and then we're going to go to Effects and put Warp Stabilizer on the two clips. So Warp Stabilizer is just going to make our footage really smooth like Jan Olsen's cinematics. After Warp Stabilizer is done we can see that it looks pretty smooth so why don't we start off with our first effect which is speed ramming so we're going to drag this first video line up so that we can see more of the clip and we can also see our keyframes that we're about to make so for this first clip i'm just going to right click so once you put warp stabilizer you're going to have to nest the clip one more time so that we can add timer mapping on this so i'm going to right click and press show clip keyframes and then go to timer mapping and speed so we can add timer mapping now which will make the speed ramping so we're going to go to timer mapping and then we're going to press the keyframe button for the speed at a random point in our clip and then go a little bit forward and then press the keyframe button again and then we can drag the line in between the two keyframes up so that it speeds up in this time frame. And then you can drag those keyframe bars so that it creates a diagonal line, which it will smoothly transition into the faster speed and then transition out of the faster speed. So you can add this effect in different parts of your clips. And then he also likes to use this as a transition. So you can go to our end of this clip and then press the keyframe button for speed again. And then drag the bar all the way up so it's super fast in the end and then we can create that diagonal line so we can smooth it out and so then if you watch it back it just speeds up into the next clip and to make this transition a little bit smoother you might want to add a speed ramp in the beginning of this next clip so I'm going to right click on this next clip press show clip keyframes timer mapping and then check off speed and I'm just going to go um, a little bit after the beginning of the clip and speed it up all the way and we can drag our little bar so that it creates a diagonal line so it's smooth and then watch it back and yeah you can adjust it a little so that it's a little bit more smoother and yeah creates a cool speed ramping effect and this is definitely a effect used in a lot of people's videos a lot of people's cinematic videos okay so now in this end of this clip you could see that I start to pan down so this is something you would do while you're shooting a lot of transitions he uses is like whip effects so what you can do with this is just whip down or whip to the side and then you can speed it up in post so since I already have speed ramping on I can go to where I start to pan down and then press the keyframe button and then drag the speed line up so that it speeds up in the end and this will be when I'm whipping down, so it'll be a pretty cool whip effect. And then you can bring your next clip in. And then you might also want to have a whip in the beginning of your next clip. I just didn't have it for this one because I don't, <laughs> I just didn't shoot it like that. But you can if you want to. Okay, now let's move on to our next effect. And for this one, we're going to use the smooth zoom transition. And I already have a tutorial for this, but I'll re-show it to you guys in this video. So what you're going to need to do is click the link in my description and download my smooth zoom pack of two presets. Uh, it's basically the two presets you need to create this effect. But once you have it downloaded in Premiere Pro, I can show you how to do it right now. The first thing you want to do is create a new adjustment layer and then drag it to your second video line. And then just adjust it so it's just in the beginning of your second clip. And then you're going to hold all on that adjustment layer and bring it to the third video line and drag it out so that it covers both of the clips. So this is just where the transition is going to be taking place. And then we're going to go to effects and get that smooth zoom transition and we're going to bring six screens to the shorter adjustment layer that's in the second video line 
and bring the smooth zoom effect on our third video line. And so if you look down at our smooth zoom effect, you're going to want where the first clip meets the second clip to be right where the middle of the transition is. And then, yeah, you have the smooth zoom transitions. So now this next transition is going to be a sort of luma fade transition. And he doesn't use this often, but I did see it in one of his videos. Okay, so I'm going to need another clip behind this. So I'm just going to cut this clip in half and bring it to the second video line. And then hold all on my first clip and just bring it under it. Uh, just because I don't have another clip, I'm just going to reuse a different clip. But you're just going to want your clip to be on the second video line for this effect. And then it'll transition into the clip under. So in effects, we're going to search up Luma Key and we're going to put that on our clip on our second video line. And then you have this threshold and you can adjust it accordingly to what you think looks good. So I'm going to just have this one at 42%. And then we're going to have it just fade out. So we're going to go a little bit after the clip starts. And then we're going to press the keyframe button for opacity. And then we're going to go a little bit forward and bring that down to zero. So it'll just fade out. And that's an effect that I actually use a lot. Okay, lastly, let's just talk a little bit about color grading. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And bring it to my fourth video line. Because you always want to put your color grading on adjustment layers. So I'm going to just drag it over all my clips and then search up Lumetri Color and put it on the adjustment layer. Y'all know since color grading is always kind of different in his videos, it depends on his location I feel like. It's mostly a teal and orange color grading with like some fade on it. I'm just going to put one of my LUTs. I'm going to use FES7 for my summer travel LUT pack. And so his color grading has some fade to it. I'm sure he's just using a LUT. So I'm just going to add some fade about like 18%. But then his coloring at the same time is also pretty vibrant. So you can add some contrast and vibrance if you want. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of inform you guys a little bit about his sort of color grading style. I don't suggest you fully copy his color grading style. Maybe create your own style. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below your favorite effect. Um, and subscribe for more videos. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.